We're now joined by head coach Corey Close from UCLA. Coach, welcome and congratulations on a great season. Thank you. It's really good to be here. And thank you for all the, the media coverage, for the people that are doing all the work behind the scenes. I know that these kind of events uh, don't go off the way that I know this one will without a lot of people's sacrifice. And so we appreciate it. We're really glad to be here. We're excited to compete. I think it's going to be a great matchup. And uh, we're very grateful. OK, great. We'll take questions from the floor for coach. Who'd like to start? We'll start on the outside left. Hi, welcome to Kansas City. Michelle Vopel from ESPN.com. Hi, Michelle. Um, you were a point guard in college, and a very good one. And we've got some really good ones here with these four teams. Can you first talk about what it means to be a college point guard, especially at this level of the tournament when you're in the Sweet 16, and then also just particular with, with yours, with Jordan, and how much she's meant to this program? Yeah, I, thank you, Michelle, for even mentioning my, me in the realm of these point guards here. I don't know if I'm actually in their league, but uh, I do think being a point guard, um, especially at this level, um, I think I, I probably wouldn't be a coach if I hadn't have been influenced um, to have to think the game as well as play the game in very intense situations. Uh, you know, I think at this level that coaches do not determine uh, what happens as much as point guards do. Point guards have to be able to communicate in the most pressurized moments. They have to be able to direct. They have to be able to prevent things. They have to be able to make plays. They have to have a sense of what their team needs from them uh, because the, really it starts with them on both ends of the floor. Specifically with Jordan Canada, I, I'm just not sure you're going to find a more complete point guard. And I, obviously I'm biased because I work with her every day, but if you look at the numbers and you really watch her play and watch her influence on all the dimensions of the game, uh, I, I'm, I think she's spectacular. I watch film with her every week, and now I'm not leading the film sessions. She's leading the film sessions. You know, what are, what are our best looks here? What would you have wanted to see different in this situation? Um, and we're really talking the game, and I am learning as much from her as I hope she's learning from me. So her intellect and ability to understand the game, I think, is first. But then her ability on defense to be able to uh, guard multiple people. We've done a lot of switching this year, and we have never once gotten beat um, with her switching onto a post player. She will find a way to do what she needs either on the ball or away from the ball to help our team get a stop. And then offensively, you know, I used to say her weakness was her outside shooting and now she's, um, you know, been shooting over 40% from the three-point line most of the year. Obviously her assist to turnover ratio. There was a couple of years ago she had a dream to be a top, um, a top five level draft pick. And so we went and looked at every point guard that was a top tw five draft pick from the last several years. And we had all of their statistics down. And I was in a home visit the other day and I pulled that sheet out. And she has either met those statistics or exceeded them on all three fronts. So I'm just really proud of not only the basketball player that she is, but uh, how, how she's grown as a leader. And I do think she's a complete point guard at this point. Question on the aisle on the middle, and then we'll get over on the side. Rick Can to the Austin American Statesman. Coach, I want to ask you about two players. Uh, Deprice, three years ago, was a big star in my town. LaShawn Higgs, the exact same thing. First question is, did you recruit both of them? And if you did, what, what, what are your thoughts as a recruiter? If yeah. not, then what did you like about Japrice coming out of Texas Tech? But the first one, if you if you may. Absolutely. But actually, it's funny. I recruited Higgs. I didn't recruit Dean out of high school. Um, so I have probably a better knowledge of Higgs in terms of um, her, her growing up years, in terms of watching her play, but really loved uh, Higgs's mid-range game, her ability to guard. Um, I think, you know, we, we it's, it's been documented we played each other in a closed scrimmage earlier this year, and I just was really impressed with her um, improvement, and so I, I really, we wanted her. We would have loved the chance to have had her out to California, and, and she's a really good player, and, and Texas is lucky to have her. Um, I did recruit her out of high school. Japrice, um, I did not, so um, when she became available and we were really in need of another point guard that she, um, I went and watched all of her film at Texas Tech and her ability to be creative with the ball. Um, she's fearless. She has great instincts. Um, she loves the game of basketball. I mean, she'll, you know, she's all over social media like most kids these days and she'll post something 
something with like three, her, two computers and a TV going with three different games, and she just can't get enough. And, and I think this day and age, that's uh, really a lost art, and I, I really think that uh, Japrice's love of the game is what leads to her creativity of the game. And uh, I've really, it's, it's, it was a great find by us, and I'm really, really thrilled she's a Bruin. Question on the outside right. Mark Kern, Kansas City Star. Coach, Hi, uh, obviously UMBC got a lot of talk with the upset last weekend against Virginia, but in the women's tournament, especially for the three seeds like you, it's a pretty difficult week with Florida State and Ohio State going down, Tennessee losing for the first time ever at home. Just talk about what does that say about the overall women's college basketball, just so many upsets in the competitiveness. Well, I think that's, you know, it's sort of a good news, bad news, right? I mean, obviously, I used to coach at Florida State, so I was very tuned into that game. And, um, you know, you're like, it made us a little nervous. We were the last game, and our players were aware of that. They were talking that, hey, we will not be that team. You know, lock in, execute our game plan, and, and we were very aware. But in a global sense, um, I, I'm thrilled for our game that there's more and more players um, and more and more teams playing at a higher and higher level. And, you know, I think the women's game has got to be, um, you know, actually Michelle and I have talked about this before, but we have got to be committed to things bigger than ourselves. And there's been a lot of talk through this tournament about exposure, and thank you for covering it, all of you for covering our game. Um, but we need those competitive games. We need more and more teams to bring that kind of excitement. And it's really important that all of us in, in our women's game uh, – all the way down to grassroots is having a mindset of how can we grow the game? How can we grow interest? Because the bottom line is it affects young girls' lives. Let's, you know, it's not just about exposure. It's not just about money. Um, the statistics don't lie. It makes a difference in the lives of girls to be involved in sport at this kind of level. And so we need to be committed to continue to grow the game. And this kind of tournament, having parity, having upsets, having exposure, having communication about it, uh, that's really important for us. Got a question on the aisle. Tiffany Nguyen, LA Daily News. Coach, Texas is obviously an exceptional rebounding team. What's the, kind of the message for you, you guys to be able to kind of compete on that in that Well, stage? they are exceptional, and, you know, they – um, it's not just from their bigs, you know, their guards, you know, Adkins, Higgs, uh, you know, all of them are great rebounders. And so um, I think it's going to be, we've we really, I think we know what we're going to get from our forwards, Lajene Drummer, Monique Billings, Michaela Onionware, um, you know, Lauren Miller, all of those people have to rebound at a high level and cumulatively. But I think the real key factors for us is going to be Chantel Horvat, uh, Kennedy Burke, if we're playing zone, our guards being able to rebound on the backside, I think it really, for us to be able to um, mitigate that advantage and that strength of theirs, uh, all of our guards are going to have to be involved in rebounding every single possession. Question on the outside right. Coach, obviously in this tournament format, you can play two games in two days. You've done that a couple times this year where you played Baylor, UConn within three days, and then couple times in conference with two top 25 teams. How can those familiar, you know, experiences yeah. in a situation like this help you out? Well, I think that that happens a lot in the Pac-12. So it's that's where the structure of the Pac-12 really helps you because that the rhythms of that are something that we're really used to. And there's so many good teams. Uh, I think we have the most teams in the, in the regionals or above right now, and we have for the last several years. So um, that, this is a very normal thing, and I do think it gives our players a lot of confidence that this is what we do. This is what we've prepared for. These are the rhythms in, in which we're used to. So, uh, you know, I think – but at this point, you just better be glad you're playing or you're not going to be playing any longer. So you better be competing. You better be ready. Um, there's no excuses. So I don't care if you've had five days in between or one day in between. Um, you have to have the mental stamina and the desire um, to prepare at a level to get yourself ready. And that's how you earn the right to prepare again. Question on the outside left. Um, Corey, if you look at these two programs, there's a long gap between UCLA Sweet 16 appearances until the senior class kind right. of and, and you coming in in the senior class and, and 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 with Karen in Texas it was the same way it was about a decade can you compare the two programs because they have such great histories but they had to sort of like regenerate yeah. their, themselves 
Well, first of all, I just give Karen so much credit. Um, you know, a lot of people have compared our careers. We were assistants for a long time, and and we had a chance to take over programs that did have a rich history, um, and you know, try to honor that history, but also at the same time build on it. And I think uh, actually, her and I have talked about this. That um, what a what a privilege, what a privilege to be able to honor people that really blazed a trail. That really, um, you know, Denise Curry is with us on this trip. Um, Annie Myers was at our last game. I know the history of Texas people and what she has done to bring back and invest in the history of Texas. And I just think there's got to be a sense of humility and pride that we get to walk in the path that they blazed and we get to honor them by building upon it. And so I think that's really was a big, I can't speak for her on this, but that was a big motivator for me when I went back to UCLA. Coach Wooden poured into my life for 15 years and I got to be mentored by him. Um, Annie Myers, I've known since I I was an athlete at UC Santa Barbara and has invested in me and these alums have come back and you know the history we had just as many men's basketball alumni back at our second round game as women's basketball alumni there's just a privilege and a humility of being able to build on a path that was so courageously blazed and uh, you know it's a privilege we it's the first time actually in UCLA history that we've gone to three straight sweet 16s and um, you know mostly that that credit goes to the choices of these courageous young women. Um, but to be a part, of, maybe even just a small part of leading that charge, uh, it's humbling and I'm deeply grateful for the legacy that came before me. Time for one final question on the aisle here. Coach, outside of UConn, I think um, in my eyes, Baylor has been the biggest bully on the block, so to speak. And I mean that in a nice way. How did you guys beat Baylor? Well, I think that um, we shot the ball really well. They tried to go under a lot of screens, and, and Jordan Canada was just really good on reading the ball screen, and we got high percentage shots. We were also able to mix our defenses, so they're so good when they can get into a rhythm at getting Kalani Brown touches on a consistent basis, uh, and we were really able to mix our defenses and make things really hard for their guard play. At that point, you know, they had a lot of new guards. Um, you know, that was like maybe, I don't know, fourth game of the year. It's really early on, and their guards were guards Guard play was very young outside of Christy Wallace, and uh, I think that we took advantage of that a, a little bit. We trapped some ball screens. We went zone. Um, you know, we did a lot of things that try to make it difficult for them to find the rhythm to find Kalani Brown on a consistent basis. And then, you know, we did not rebound them, and she scored 33 points. So I can't even imagine why I'm saying that in some ways. But I was like, we did a heck of a job. We held her to 33. Um, but I, I think that you know we were able to make their guard decisions difficult, and we got into our transition game. And, and turned them over a few times. I think you, we have to win the possession game to be successful. Um, and we didn't win it on the, on the rebounds, but I think we won it on the turnover margin, if I remember correctly. But that made a big difference. Okay, Coach, thank you very much for your comments. We'll let you go back to the locker room. Okay, thank you and all. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Rick. You need to slow down on your name because they're not picking it up on them. Thank you.
you're going to get this transcribed, so. Thanks, Rick. We are now joined by our student athletes from UCLA, Jordan Canada, Kelly Hayes, and Monique Billings. Welcome, ladies, and we're going to take some questions from the floor. First question for our student athletes. We have a question on the aisle in the middle. Uh, Tiki Nguyen, LA Daily News. Kelly, you guys are going to your third straight Sweet 16. Bef prior to the one uh, when you guys were sophomores, you hadn't gone, in a, or this program hadn't gone in a while. So how, are, how would you compare your feelings to going into that Sweet 16 ga game versus the ones that you have now going into this third one? I think there's less anxiety because we've been here before. Uh, three times in a row, that's a good luck charm. Um, but it's also something that not every team gets to do, and we've done it. And we always say this legacy that we want to build at UCLA, and we've already built it. Um, no program in UCLA women's basketball history has made it three times in a row, and we've done it, and we're not done yet. So um, I think there's more ease with us with having the maturity and growth that we've had and had the experiences these past three years to get us to this moment um, and where we're at now. So um, if anything, I think we're ready. Oh, I know we're ready um, to conquer this and you know exceed um, in ways that we haven't before. Question on the outside right. Mark Kern, Kansas City Star. Jordan was talking to Coach, and she mentioned how with the other three seeds going down, that kind of you got your guys' attention. What was the mindset when you saw those other three seeds, maybe a little more excitement to get the game going? 
Well, it's the March, <laughs> it's the tournament, so we know there's always going to be upsets, but actually Christian, our uh, video coordinator, brought it to our attention, and um, we just kind of had the mindset going out. We didn't have a great game against American. You know, they kind of stuck around um, throughout the majority of the game, and we knew that we didn't play to our potential. So seeing the upsets that day and coming in and having a mindset that that wasn't going to be us, and we're on the bigger, um, we wanted to conquer bigger things. And so by that, we just had to play our game. And I thought when we played against Creighton, we came out strong and we played consistent throughout the whole game. And I think that's how we need to play the rest of the tournament. Question on the outside left. Yeah, Michelle Vogel from ESPN.com. This is for Jordan. Um, Corey was talking about how you guys, when you watch film together, she even learns things from you, that you've just become very, very adept at breaking down um, film. And she also talked about how you guys sat down maybe a couple years ago and you said, hey, this is what I need to do to become a better uh, point guard. How, can you talk about that process, how the two of you have worked together? Because obviously I know she played point guard, but just what that relationship has been like and how that's helped you grow. Our relationship in the beginning, you know, was a was up and down um, at first. And, you know, like I, like she said, I came to her, I sat down and we had a conversation. We talked it out about, you know, how can she make me better as a point guard and um, the things that I wanted to do to get better. And from there, we just kind of grew our relationship. And that kind of came with watching a lot of film together, just seeing ways of what she's thinking and what I'm thinking and how we can combine our ideas. Um, to help our team and as well as to help me grow. Um, but our relationship, you know, wasn't always great. And, um, but now I can definitely say that we're, we're at a great spot right now. And um, I, really I really love Coach and what she's done for us and, and for me as well. But, yeah, I can say it wasn't, you know, always a great relationship. <laughs> Got a question on the aisle on the left side. Kelly, coach was just talking about how important rebounding is going to be in this battle. You know what you're always going to get from Monique. You know what you're going to get from Lajene. What are What's the guard's role in trying to uh, compete on the boards uh, against a team like Texas? Uh, well, we actually, when we watched film this morning, uh, coach was just saying we need guard, guard rebounding. And obviously, like, we're going to get what we get from Mo. She's been consistent in Laj, um, but people like Michaela coming off the bench. Like, she's a huge spark for our team. Like, she, when she comes in the game, she is resilient at getting boards. It doesn't matter who's in front of her. Um, or people like Chantel. Um, she comes off the bench, and she just brings a great spark of, like, getting the ball. Um, but also, like, me or Jordan, KB, and JP, like, we need to get those boards. Um, and it's not always easy. Like, because sometimes guards are bigger than you or like you're going against a post player. But at the end of the day, we have this thing called passion plays and passion plays like one of our one of the passion plays are um, assist box outs. And maybe I could be boxing out a player and I may not get the ball, but I box out so well that Jordan got the ball. And like that's another that's a rebound. Like those are other ways that us as a team can build the rebounding um, the building, ugh, sorry, the rebounding margin. And so those are just like little things that we can focus on and like every possession matters. And so getting every rebound on offense and defense um, and knowing that the ball is ours versus just like staring at it, we just have to go and get it. Question on the outside left. Um, Monique, you um, and Jordan played with Ariel on the under-23 team, and obviously you played these guys two years ago in the Sweet 16. So you have, and, and I know you had the, the scrimmage too, so you have a lot of familiarity with Texas. Um, what do you think with them? What They're such a good guard team and a good rebounding team. What do you think are the biggest challenges you face, especially as well as you know this team? That's a really good question. I think that we match up pretty evenly. Um, in all positions, I mean, they're very fast and athletic, and that's how we describe our team as well. So um, I think it's honestly about who wants it more. They play with a lot of passion, so we have to be able to match that and maybe exceed that. And I think that's how we have to plan on starting the game. We have to set the tempo, and um, we just have to come out on fire and just come out with a fire about us that they have to catch up to us. And I think that's the plan going into the game tomorrow. On the outside left. 
Um, Jordan, Kelly was talking about just the, the tradition and the history. Where you went to high school is about, it's not very far from Poly Pavilion, right? I mean, it's maybe five yeah. miles even with LA traffic. Yeah, you know? it's about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. So what's it meant to you to, to be this team that's been the first to, to go to three Sweet 16s? I mean, when you came here, it had, like, it had been a while. What does it mean to you to be part of this class that's done that? I mean, it's amazing. It's an honor and a blessing to be a part of this group. Um, that's what I came here to do. I came here to create a legacy with UCLA basketball and with the girls I played with, um, the girls that I'm with right now next to me. Um, it's just an amazing feeling that we set out what we came here to do. And um, to know that we're a part of a legacy that we created and uh, to be a part of UCLA history is just something that you don't come across every day. And I'm just thankful to be a part of it and to represent you know, where I come from and to represent UCLA and West Coast basketball. And no matter the result of what happens, just knowing that what we did here at UCLA is something that you, no one can take away from us. And I think that's what's most important. Um, and it's not just about the legacy that we left, but it's also the impact that we left on um, little girls' lives and other people, honestly, adults as well, and just being able to impact other people, and I think that's what's most important. But just to know to be a part of something great is an honor and a blessing, and I'm thankful. Anything else for our student athletes? Ladies, it looks like you did a very good job. Congratulations, <laughs> and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>